I kidding? It's always bug season in Texas, and that's why you need Grandeur Pest Solutions in your corner. They're locally owned and operated. They're trained, they're trustworthy, and they have a proven record as they have been in business for almost 10 years. They provide pest control against ants, bed bugs, bees, roaches, fleas, wasps, mosquitoes, rodents, spiders. If it crawls and you don't like it, they're probably going to take care of it for you. Now, they serve all of the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and they're locally owned. These two guys have been running this business since 2013, and every year they get bigger and bigger. But you know what they still do? They still have great customer service. In fact, if you get a hold of them, they're usually going to have your quote and your job ready to go within 48 hours. That's pretty good. Now, you can call them for a free estimate at 469-809-1769. You can find them online at Grandeur4, that's the number four, shore.com. You can also find them on Facebook. Just type in Grandeur Pet Solutions, and we are so happy that their title sponsor for Outdrank the Coverage in 2023. Hey, I mean, that was a good point. I think we might start seeing some go back. Oh, man, if every game could be like that one. Hello, everybody. Terry Bennett, intern Noe here. Out, drink the coverage, talking Dallas Cowboys NFL. Brought to you by Grandeur Pest Solutions right here on L4 Media. Uh, And, man... Early thoughts, we'll dive deeper into the game, but early thoughts last night, uh, I, I'm, I'm actually flabbergasted. That was a weird, it was a weird game, but none of it felt fluky, if that makes sense. Uh, I, it was an odd game because I had a high expectations going in. That, I mean, I didn't predict the Giants to you know have a great year, but yeah, they kind of made improvements all over the team. And then for them to not even score a point for Daniel Jones to look like a rookie again, Saquon didn't do anything. Maybe because it was raining, that might have played a factor. But it was just an odd game, and I'm cautiously happy. Oh yeah, the, the Cowboys looked fast. It was on the road, prime time, in the rain, in the rain, like heavy rain, folks. This wasn't like just a little bit of drizzle. Uh, one of the Dallas. Uh, beat writers was talking about that you know like he was at the game and he said it, it, you know in the press box the rain on tv did not show how hard it was like it was and especially in that third quarter you could see it to where it, it affected what both teams did offensively i mean special teams was great for the cowboys that that defense was all over the place i mean that i don't know what else to say i mean Johnson. All right, that's the show then. Everybody have a great day. We'll talk to you all next week. This is out Drake. No, but yeah, you're right. I and mean, we'll get more into the actual gameplay here in a little bit. But but I have to ask you, I, this is where I love to do this to you. I told you we might talk about it, but we're going to talk about our fantasy leagues because I have, I had, I will have, because uh, I can't come back in any of them. I will have had a one and seven. And literally, I will have won by Brandon Cook catching a, that third pass that didn't really matter for like seven yards. And oh, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win 94.65 to 93.78. Oh, so uh, I, I had one of those weeks. But in saying that, I tend to have bad first weeks in fantasy football. I, it's just, it takes me a little bit to calibrate. And also you and I talked about it. Fantasy football, you're going to have weird touchdowns and, and stuff like the Rams running back. He's not going to have Kyron Williams. He's not going to have three touchdowns oh, yeah. every week, you know? Watch him now lead the league and get like 42 touchdowns. He's the next Priest Holmes. But uh, by the way, uh, folks, the Rams aren't buried yet. I'm just going to say that now. That was probably the biggest shocker of the weekend for week one. Okay. That, even cool. more of a shocker than Detroit beating Kansas City. Okay. Why was, I predicted that. Why does Okay, anyway, let, let's, I, I, I got to go in order. You got me excited. Uh, first off, intern Noe, how are you doing? What are you drinking? I'm doing well, Mr. Bennett. I am drinking Old Forester 1920 Prohibition mm-hmm. style. It's one of my favorite bourbons. What are you drinking, and how are you? I am, well, it's Cowboy Victory. It's Cowboy Victory Monday. I feel like one of those. You remember those FM stations like uh, Family Guy would make fun. I feel like I need to have a bunch of drops now. Stinky in the butt. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm just drinking water. I'll straight up admit it. I, it's, I, I out drink the coverage in our, our special events. Like when you come into the studio or off season, yeah. I can't really out drink the coverage. Like I would love to during season because you know, after you and I get done with these, I've got 20 other shows to do. So I'm drinking water. I'm playing safe. Uh, but let's go ahead real quick. Let's talk about, we have two out drink the coverage leagues this year. We have a money league and we have a fun league. I am getting whipped in both of them. I will lose. I will lose badly in the, in our money league, uh, mainly because of the Joe Burrow, T Higgins, and then also uh, Travis Kelsey. You lack of Joe Burrow. And T. Higgins. Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll talk about that. Cause you have a, you, you're, you, that's a, that's a game that I, you and I see different. Um, but how are you going to do in our league? In the money league, I'm probably going to lose. I'm projected to win, but the Cowboys scoring 50 points in this league. Yeah. Uh, has that team up by five points. Um, yeah. I have Rodgers tonight and they have Garrett Wilson. So as long as he throws it to Randall Cobb only, I, I think I'll, I'll win. They are best friends. In uh, the, the fun league, I am comfortably ahead. I have. I also have N Rogers in that league, but I have Austin Eckler and Calvin Ridley, who had a great first game for Jackson. Welcome back. I wonder if he put money on that one. <laughs> yeah. You know, I did love that he had he made a big play and I was watching Red Zone. Yeah, yesterday. you talking about this. He made a big play, and then the next thing you saw was DraftKings. I think that's awesome. It's just it's just I, I think they did that on purpose. Oh, I do too. But boy, he looked like he had been playing for four years and he was taking that leap at wide receiver. People need to watch out for him this year. And uh, I also had Washington's defense, who I try to get in every lead because I'm just trying to get anyone that's playing Arizona. That's that's but, my thing too, yeah. And then Arizona almost won that game against Washington. But, but defense-wise, you you got decent points, right? But, uh, yeah, I got a butt mm. projection, which I was hoping for. So Yeah, and – uh We'll do once once what we'll do starting next week because I, I don't want to try to go in here and say so and so is going to win because I don't know who has what left. But what we'll do is each week uh, at the beginning of the show, except for when the Cowboys lose and we're consoling each other, um, <laughs> we'll give an update of our standings on okay. that and go yeah. and do it like that because it's real hard on Monday because there's so much, especially a game like this with Buffalo and the Jets and you've probably got everybody probably has at least one player that's you know still playing. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, that is our out drink the coverage leagues. We do appreciate everybody that's joined those. All right, so we're gonna we'll, we'll put Dallas and the Giants in the back half. Okay. I, I want to start with best uniforms. I, I want to try to remember to start there every time because you have a best uniform game that I have as a worst uniform game, but only because the Miami Dolphins will not go back to their old look. Uh, the Chargers just beautiful. Ah. Yes. If you look carefully. I saw. I saw. I, I appreciate really have that. The chargers. <laughs> we have a we have a run sheet. I need to remember next time to to put this where we can show the run sheet. Um, but yeah, the Chargers look lovely. I mean that they've they've darkened the yellow a little bit. It just it looks perfect. Miami, just go back to the. Everybody loves the old look. Just go back to the old look. Um, San Francisco, Pittsburgh. That's one of those that we always talk about. That it looks great because it's two iconic themes, and it it's such a great. Like it, it, I don't know. There's something cool about when, when Dallas or San Francisco, and this might be because I got into a big rewatch of the Dallas nineties and I saw the 94 uh, game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I saw the 97 game. I forget how bad Dallas it, it's amazing where Dallas started 97. Of course we know what ends up happening for that year, yeah. uh, but there's something cool about the noon game to start the NFL Dallas or San Francisco in their road. Look at Pittsburgh. It just looks great. Yeah, it's just the, the color contrast. You know, Steelers have the, the black and yellow. San Francisco has the, the red and gold and white. Cowboys have the blue, silver, and white. Yeah. It's just a great contrast, especially if it's a night game. So the, the white really pops out. Yeah. But see, I, I like it being noon. I, I don't know. I like the noon and the bright. I was thinking the same thing with Washington, Arizona. There was a point, uh, like, in the third quarter, uh, the, the sun breaks out, and you can see fall coming. Yeah. Like you can see it's a fall sun, and that just looks so reassuring to me. Um, you've got Tampa Bay, Minnesota. I don't know, man. Tampa Bay's uniform just it's better than what they had during the Jameis Winston era, but it it, it just doesn't do it for me. It's fine. It, it's it's perfectly fine. It's not to I don't think other than the Miami Dolphins, and honestly, I don't think the Dolphins are that terrible. I just prefer their old look better. I don't think there's a true ugly look in the league, but Tampa Bay is probably the most meh for me. Really? Because yeah. I, I think for me, I actually like their uniforms 
The one I've called meh right now is the Broncos. Oh, yeah, the Broncos, too, but that's just because it's been – and them in Seattle. Just because yeah. because we've seen it. Those are both dated, in my opinion. The Broncos are dated into the late 90s. The Seattle is dated into the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, I, I, I can't wait to see Seattle's retro uniforms back, though. Oh, uh, no, man. I, I have a funny yeah. feeling after this year, you're going to see some of these teams start running those out two or three times. And I have no problem with that. If you want to keep your, lo- your new look, or not new, it's 25 years old now, but if you want to keep that and just interchange with your old look a few times, I, I think that's brilliant. That's great. Colleges do it now. You know, colleges have 40 different – everybody complained 10 years ago, oh, they're going to have – you're not going to know who they are. Yeah, you do. You know it's Oregon when you see – and by the way, Oregon's look on, against Texas Tech this past week, both of them. Oregon had the all-white with the silver helmet, and then Texas Tech had the all-red with the white helmet. That looked beautiful. Just doing, We got to do that on college. We forgot to do that on college. We got to have a pretty a, – a, a good uniform game. Uh, there wasn't really any ugly ones. Oh, uh, Cincinnati-Cleveland looked great. Um, I, I, I like when Cleveland does either the white face mask or the brown, and I thought them wearing it with that the old look, that looked great. Uh, there wasn't really any true, true ugly. I, I am starting to get out on the Rams, though. Eh. I don't know. I, I don't like that. But I mean, I love their old yellow and blue, but the way they changed it this year or the last, I guess, since 2020, I just it, it doesn't look good to me. I'd rather I just put oh. these up. Oh, you're going to put the helmets on. I even man. seen the college. I had two Texas helmets. There we go. There we go. Sorry about that. I forgot. You know, speaking of like helmets, yeah. did you see? Uh, I think it was Tony Pollard's helmet. Like how it looked, how it was designed. That's the same one that uh, uh, one of the Kansas City running backs wears. That I kept telling you last year. I love that look because it almost has the old seventies face mask in it, and and it cuts, mm. but it, it cuts back further and all. But yeah, a bunch of Chiefs wear that. Uh, I've liked that helmet for a couple years because it does. It kind of reminds me of the old school like. The Danny White, when you think of Danny White uh, type face. It just looks so much different than any other helmet. Yeah, it really does. It stands out. But, uh, but yeah, so that's what we do on this, by the way. We like to talk uniforms and stuff. But let's get into it. Let's go. We'll start with the other games. We'll just kind of rapid fire here. Uh, hey, Las Vegas, Jimmy G don't lose, man. Uh, boring ass game. Uh, and the first week will be uh, come up some of these. That's what we talked about. It was kind of a eh week. Um, you know that was the thing for the week. It was just a sloppy week. Sloppy week. Uh, outside of what Dallas did and what San Francisco did, it was just a sloppy week. And the Eagles for t- a quarter. We'll talk about that one. That that was interesting. Um, yeah. But give Jimmy G credit. And again, this is a divisional game, so this is an important win. You can see what Sean Payton's going to do there. I, I think Broncos are going to be fine. I don't know if they're going to be fine this year, and I don't know if it's going to be Russell Wilson. I'm not saying I expected 40 points, but. They struggled. They, they they had the same struggles as they did last year, and everybody's healthy this year. Like, well, I think Judy was out, um, but you still got Court, yeah. and then you still got Javante. Would look pretty good coming back. Um, I I don't know. I, I just expected a little bit more of that offense. Defense looked pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it looked really good. I, it still, haven't said that. That I, I, just, I mean, the offense to me should have done way better. They had the Ben Powers and Mike McGlinchey added to the line. Javante Williams is healthy. A new offensive scheme led by what's considered a, a very good coach. Yeah. I know you have your thoughts and opinions on Sean Payton, but you know Russell Wilson should be more motivated. They, they on paper they look like a team that should be making the playoffs, but the same thing happened again. They lost them by about the same score they were losing last yeah, year. Yeah, that's a great point. Even think about that, like that. If you'd have told me, if you just showed me film of that without showing me the sidelines and said, "Hey, that's that was from last year," that's you're 100 percent on point on that. And I think Belichick made a big mistake in letting Jacoby Myers walk because he was fast. Okay, and he looked so good in that Raiders I, uniform. I'm calling it now, though. Devontae Adams is not going to be happy in three weeks because you can tell that Jimmy G and, and Myers have a connection. Like you could just, I, I, I always believe, and it's funny because this is one of the easiest pass routes to throw and to run, but I, I just will always go back to what uh, Troy Aikman said of, you know, you have chemistry with your running or with your wide receiver when you can throw 10 slant passes and it's 10 catches because yeah. the break and everything has to be so perfect. You have to, you know, and all that. And, and that just, and, and I'm joking about Devontae. That, that's actually going to help the, the Raiders. Uh, and in fact, again, the Broncos D is good enough. The Raiders probably left a touchdown or two on the field that they probably could, that will be converting here 
in a couple. Raiders are not bad, folks. They're not bad at all. Uh, we, we, ha- we have fun with Frank and our sports rehab page, but legitimately, uh, you and I said it in the preseason show, we both think the Raiders can make a play for the playoffs this year. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Jacobs didn't do much in this game, but that's because Denver has a really good front now. But he still looks I mean, good. He still looked good. But it's no one's going to look good against this Denver yeah. front. They I got mean, Zach yeah, yeah, Allen. Yeah. They got a healthy Randy Gregory. It's, it's going to be tough for anybody. What did, did Randy Gregory do anything? I didn't even notice. He was in the game, so that's that, something. Right. <laughs> he, he had a tackle. Right there in of itself is a win for the Denver Broncos. Again, I keep telling people, when you look at through the last 20 years, the players that Dallas either missed out on, uh, didn't sign who were in contention, or let go who everybody was mad at, Dallas tends to be kind of right. Luckily, sometimes. Uh, yeah. Like the cornerback that went to the Eagles. Man, what's his name? Um Back in the from the Raiders, uh, in, from the oh, 20- oh, oh, I mean, he he was at one point people comparing him. He's a combo of Rod Woodson and Deion Sanders, and and that's really the last guy I remember Dallas truly making a true like big free agent money push to. Mm-hmm. They lost it. He went to the Eagles, and apparently he was one of those that he got his money and he was like, okay, I'm good. I mean, that's from like, like that's what people say around the team. Like he was a great guy. He wasn't like a jerk about it, but the effort wasn't quite what it was in the Raiders when he was still trying to earn that bag. Well, it seemed like he was more of a man to man cornerback, not a like zone cornerback. That's so weird to me. Anyway, well, that's I, I, that, I think it's something I heard. No, I, I agree. I think I remember hearing that too. But th- again, if this is the first time you're hearing the show, that's what we do. We'll end up in the 2010 uh, Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Tampa Bay, but Minnesota. That's one of those little upset games. We, we tried to say this during our preview shows. I've said this for years, and you have too, not just like I only won. In all sports, uh, or all football, I mean, week one doesn't matter. You just except for college because it has to matter sometimes, but it, it doesn't matter. If if Minnesota and Tampa Bay played next week, I think Minnesota would win by two touchdowns. Uh, Tampa Bay at times just looked absolutely atrocious, and and Minnesota just kept giving them the game, kept giving them the game. Um, but yeah, bad win for Minnesota. But I I, I think in three weeks it'll be forgotten. Yeah. But the good thing is, uh, a new defensive coordinator, Briar Flores, to me was a success. Was it? I mean, Tampa Bay. They only had 242 yards. It's Tampa Bay with Baker Mayfield. I mean, but still, like, even though they lost, the defense still looked pretty solid. Well, no, I no, you, they did. Statistically, they look great. I'm just saying it was Baker Mayfield and, and Tampa. And it's sad, too, because he might have a top three wide receiver duo. But Oh, yeah. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. And, and sure. he looked, but, but Baker Mayfield looked terrible yesterday. Yeah, like yeah, he, yeah. he he just and, and give some credit to Minnesota. I'm not going to claim that it's only because he looks terrible, but he did look terrible in that game. Uh, Washington showed exactly why I was like, "What are you doing with Sam Howe?" As they almost effed around and let a, an Arizona team that has basically said we are tanking to come into Washington and beat them. Uh, Washington did win twenty to sixteen. Uh, probably the ugliest game of the week. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, San- Cleveland, Cincinnati because of the rain, but just on pure, like, if you played this game 20 times, this is probably the way it goes, like 18 of them. Yeah. I- I'll say it again. I know they got a touchdown early. Sam Howell made some good throws, but I-, I-, I still don't. When I look at that defense, I look at the rest of that team, I almost feel like they're trying to get Ron Rivera fired, but he's the one that has, has said, no, I want Sam Howell. Um, I, I just don't get it, man. This this Washington team is going to be way better than their record because they're going to lose a bunch of these games that they happen to win this week because Arizona doesn't care. And you mentioned this guy in the college podcast, but Eric, your enemy, be, be enemy? Is that how you say it? Wouldn't be enemy. I think it's what Chris Berman used to say. Hey, I, it was his first game as offensive coordinator for the Commanders, and it was kind of a ho-hum game. Uh, not too impressed. Howell was sacked six times, only got like 200 yards. A touchdown. Um, they ran. They they tried to run. They didn't really do a good job of it. Now Arizona but, still has a salty defense. Kazir White's a great addition. I'm still not yeah. sure why he went there, but he, he's a great addition for them. He was all over the field. Why right? did Leroy Glover go to Dallas back in 2002? Yeah. Money. Yeah, that's a yeah. 
I mean, Leroy Glover was right in the middle of his career. Leroy Glover, it, it, and, and he he performed in Dallas. If he's on a team that's making the playoffs consistently, Leroy yeah. Glover's a borderline Hall of Fame player. Like he legitimately, but he played four years in Dallas. I, I, money, and you, and also I think you get told, and I, I think that they believe it, but you get told that hey, you come now might have a year or two of crap, but we're, we're going to keep you. We're not going to cut your contract, which you don't know if they're going to or not, but we're, you know, you're going to still be here in three years when we're better. When Caleb yeah. Williams is our quarterback, that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm telling you, man, Arizona's going to win some of these because their defense is just good enough to, to muck some teams up. Uh, teams are going to be looking over them. Uh, it, you know, like Dallas historically struggles against Arizona. They've, they've had since they were St. Louis in the seventies. Um, but yeah, Arizona's gonna Arizona's gonna pull some ugly wins out. But I mean, Washington, you it just that was a terrible start for me. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm not sure what these other. Oh yeah, New Orleans, Tennessee. Oh, Boy, that. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I I will now say it right now. Tennessee has not made a Super Bowl because of their coaching. Oh man, it was awful. I don't they, know. Go ahead. Sorry. I don't know if it was Tannehill's three interceptions or just now they have a running back controversy because they're using Tajay Spears even, even more. Nah, I'm um, fine with that. Uh, Hopkins had a decent game in his first game, but I mean, it, it could have, I mean, again, we don't know what these teams are going to be. This is week one. It's all sloppy. Uh, and that's a good point. Again, we have to remind ourselves that even though we, we've said that and, and I do the same thing in high school, I have to remind myself that, but but I'm not I'm not, I'm not talking about how they played. I, I'm strictly going on the coaching decision with two minutes left. You kick a field goal, yes, yeah, instead of going for the touchdown. Because if you don't make the touchdown, everybody was like, "Well, you kick the field goal because then you 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 make it a, a one possession game. That's fine." But you kick the field goal, you still got two minute warning in your three timeouts. Okay, well, go for it on fourth. You still got your, you're literally putting them in the same position. Exactly. Like if you kick off, they're going to be at about the 25. If they would have gone for a touchdown and not, or, you know, gone for a first down and not made it, I think they'd have been at the 31. You, there, there's an aggressiveness that's missing with this team that has been missing with this team. And, and I, I, you see it in their offense. Their offense just gets – with the talent that they have, they get so conservative. He is still trying to win every game like he did with the Patriots as a linebacker in 2003 where you get up 17 points and you just hold on and, and you get out with a 2017 win. Yeah. And, and, and more and more, I legitimately think that he is the big reason why Tennessee feels like when we look back at this era, they're going to be good but feel like they – they left a lot of hardware on the table. Yeah, I mean, this is a tough team. I have some really tough players, and they run the ball well. But, yeah, they're. it almost seems like you can see their ceiling as a playoff team. Because of their coach. I want to see how the rest of the season plays out. <laughs> you, you, you've always been a little bit higher on him than I have. Um, I mean, I, if you just look at it, take a step back and look at it. 2019. They were like nine and seven, made the playoffs, made to the AFC title game. 2020, win the division, losing the first round. 2021, get the number one seed, losing the visual round. So they're improving in the regular season up to this point. You know, 2022, hot Step start. Back. Tannehill gets hurt, they tank. Yeah. So this year, uh, I mean, okay, New Orleans, Derek Carr, new quarterback, first game. Olave picking up where he left off. Michael Thomas started and finish the a, a game for the first time in what this decade <laughs> yeah, uh i i don't know i i want to see i want i think new orleans might be better than people think and i think Tennessee, oh, no, I, tell you, I mean you say better than people think i think most people have them as a favorite to win the south and alvin kamara didn't play kendra miller didn't play the rookie running back from tcu so jamal williams kind of carried the load and he did decent um, but yeah, it was just a low scoring. It was it was kind of a boring game. I wasn't really that impressed with it. This weekend is why the red zone is awesome. Because until you got to the Chargers uh Miami game, there were okay games. There were moments inside games that were exciting, but for the most part, overall they weren't. But because you're bouncing around, you don't notice that. I mean, you notice like oh, this is sloppy, but you don't care. Like you're not, oh, this is the only game. Because like if this is old school, like back in the day, and you know, I, I would have checked out on the, you know, because you only get 
two games back then, and then you'd get right. to Sunday night. I would have I would have checked out on the, after the noon games and be like, I'll just read up on them. Yeah. Um, but uh, but 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 this is why the red zone's awesome because it it does allow games like Jacksonville, New England. I mean Jacksonville, Indianapolis, which was a sneaky good game. But I want to first start about uh, Cleveland, Cincinnati. I, 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 most overreaction is this game. People need to realize that a. Oddly enough, Cleveland has now beat Cincinnati like six out of seven times. Um, last year, Joe Burrow and the Bengals offense threw four interceptions and in losing to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yep. The, the, the great game by Cleveland. Don't get me wrong. Their defensive front is exactly what we thought they were going to be. Uh, Deshaun Watson still does not look like Deshaun Watson. I, 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 there was a couple plays later in the game, but he and Cincinnati's defense is good. But if anybody's going to try to point to this as oh, what's wrong with Cincinnati? This is they're a, they're they're a notorious slow starter. Yeah, the last season they started off zero and two, and then they finished, I think twelve and four. They they would have played seventeen, but that was the Monday night game against Buffalo. Demar Hamlin got injured. That game got canceled. Um, so yeah, slow starters, fast finishers the last couple of years. So this might be just their MO. They only allowed two sacks. I mean, last year they allowed six sacks and seven sacks to start the season. So at least, you know, I think Orlando Brown, their big free agent signing, I think that's so far working out for them. Well, they didn't get sacks, but they were in Burrow's face a lot. Yeah, they were. I think there was 10 quarterback hits for Cleveland. So that front four, I mean, Miles Garrett was out in there. So Darius Smith was out there. Um, uh, El Caronco got a lot of praise for his Boy, job. He played well. Yeah. So that that front four is going to be a force for anybody that plays them. And then, you know, they got Denzel Ward in the secondary. So they're they're pretty good almost all over the field. They, they're probably going to end up having one of the top five defenses in football. Yeah, I think so. And they're again, I, as much as I'm saying, all the, the, the it was raining like crap and like, like you could see it on the TV. Talk about the yeah. Giants game. You couldn't really see it. You could see it on the TV. And so I think that does matter. All right. Where do you want to go next? Um, uh, Bijan, I want to uh, talk about how he did against Carolina. But I think we sort of talked about him getting stuff or getting uh, vultured. Oh, we were talking. That's oh. where we started recording. Oh, okay. Okay. So, yeah. But yeah, Atlanta beat Carolina 24 10. Bijan Robinson had a pretty good first game. I mean, a very, very beautiful touchdown. One of the best opening first ever touchdowns you you see from a, from a guy catches a little you know you call it tunnel screen little yeah. wheel route whatever you want to call it uh, nobody blocks for him and so he just to proceed, proceeds to make three guys miss as he gets into the end zone and he almost repeated that later on uh, and got knocked down at the goal line but yeah he's everything that we thought he's going to be he he yeah. looked like he's been in the league for five years already. And they're using him the way I was telling you they probably would use him, just yeah. out of the backfield. I mean, he had 10 carries. He had six catches, 83 all-purpose yards, and touchdown we mentioned. Um, still not impressed about Desmond Ritter. He kind of more playing more conservative. I mean, he's, he's 15, I mean, for, he's 15 yeah. for 18, but for 115 yards. Yeah, so. I don't think that I, – I legitimately feel like – we talked about this before, how we're in an era where there's no running backs are down, line, you know, linebackers are smaller. I legitimately feel that Atlanta is the team that goes, okay, we're going to do what everybody's not doing. We're going to build around a true running game and not just say we're going to run the ball, but actually run the ball. And 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 I, I think they're going to, I think you're going to see these type of stats all year in a good way. I, I think Ritter is going to be the Roll out, bootleg, play action, pass guy. You don't want him throwing more than twenty times a game. If you are, you're probably losing. Not because he's throwing twenty, but you're behind, is what I mean. But I also think that this is an offense that can play from behind with that running game. Because all jokes aside, uh, Tyler Algier had seventy five yards on fifteen carries, and he's a completely different style back. It's basically like what San Francisco has when, when you think. Well, whenever everybody's healthy, when you think of McCaffrey and Mitchell and, and that one two punch, they do things differently. Uh, and, and Tyler Algier is more of your power back, even though I know he can be a uh, Robinson's a power back, but you don't want him to be. That's where injuries happen. Uh, yeah. Kyle Pitts, two catches, 44 yards. And, and I think their offense will open up for uh, the page or Patriots, the Panthers. It went about like you thought it would go for a, a rookie quarterback. I, I think Bryce Young and CJ Stroud and all of them are going to be great, but you're going to have these games early 20 of 38, two touchdowns, I mean, two interceptions, a touchdown. 
Uh, a lot of dink and dunk. A lot of dink and dunk. And but you're gonna get that early. Uh, I, it's this is one of those I can't wait to see the rematch down the road between these two teams because I think Carolina will be far better ne- then than they are now. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, he already starting to throw to Hayden uh, Bryce Young, number one overall pick, quarterback for the Panthers. Already starting to throw to Hayden Hurst, usually a rookie quarterback or a young quarterback. Miles Hurst tight, tight end. ends had good games this week, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Miles Sanders had a pretty good game in his first game with the Panthers at running back. Did have a fumble though, and that was his issue with Eagles. Yeah, yeah. Um, Thielen didn't really do much. Mingo, the their top draft or their uh, their wide receiver, they drafted out of Ole Miss. Two catches each. It was kind of a ho hum on the offense. They really couldn't convert many third downs. So, but yeah, I think by season's end, this offense will hum. They have a lot of. They have too much talent to not start performing. Yeah, I totally agree there. Yeah. Now, um, that the defense is still going to have issues rushing the passer, but outside of that, um, I, I think I think Carolina will be good toward the end of the season. I think Atlanta is going to have a pretty good overall season. Jesse Bates a third. So. Yeah, I, 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 we, we said in the preview show we like what Atlanta's wanting to do. And and as long as they stick to that plan and they're able to keep doing it, I, I think they're going to be pretty good. I don't understand why people are so shocked about that Detroit game. And I'm not even talking about the injuries uh, going to Detroit, beating Kansas City. You and I talked about it. Teams that win the Super Bowl, the Thursday night game, they tend to struggle. Yeah. And not having Kelsey and Chris Jones did hurt. But, I mean, you could see this game coming a mile away, and then everybody's like, oh, my God, the Lions won. I think I told you I thought they were going to win 28-21, mm-hmm. and they won 21-20, or 28-24, and they won 21-20. Yep. Uh, I mean, that game went exactly how I kind of thought it would. At Lions, yeah, it's easy in the first game of the week, on the road, on national TV, when, yeah, I know every game in the NFL counts, but it doesn't count count. It's easy to go for it at fourth and two at your own let let's see you do that in december in you know green bay when you're trying to make a playoff both of you are trying to make a playoff i, I like what the lions did but again just like we say with the cowboys 40 nothing let's tap the brakes like still the, the lion i don't know I, they're a good team but golly people are just acting like and maybe they proved me wrong but people are just acting like oh my god they're now the team to beat in the nfc i think it would have been a different game had chris jones been playing just at the very least uh, it looked like Jerry Goff was just lip, just a statue back there. Like he didn't have to really move much. He didn't uh, have now, to move at all. Now, now Detroit's offensive line is really good. Oh yeah, they're one of the top five in the league, easy. But with Chris Jones there, it would have been a difference maker. And 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 I go back to what I told you. I if I'm a Lion fan, he had all day long, and yet they could only put up 14 points. That's exactly. that's a concern if you're the Lions because you're supposed to be an offense that's going to score 35 points you know they led the league last year and they're supposed to this year and they have the talent too but that is a little concerning and i know chiefs have an okay secondary but this is we're not talking about a chiefs defense that even with chris jones is a lockdown defense but especially without him on the front and without frank clark because he's gone i I don't know i i would have if you'd have told me he had that clean of a uniform i'd have thought detroit scored 35 or 40 yeah exactly um oh yeah frank clark went to denver he only had a couple tackles in that game i forgot to mention that um, yeah, uh, uh, Gibbs, who being drafted the first round kind of was a head scratcher to a lot of experts, did did fairly well for the Lions. I don't uh, think it was because of his talent. It was just, again, drafting a running back that high. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's definitely – we saw the talent in Alabama, but mm-hmm. being drafted that high in the first round was – especially in today's NFL, it didn't really make any sense. Bijan made a lot of sense, but not – even Bijan was kind of drafted a little bit higher than most people thought. Yeah, but Atlanta, like we talk about, Atlanta at least right now has the idea of like we're going to use him not as a thirty-five pound carry, thirty-five carry guy. We're going to use him at a fifteen carry, ten reception guy. We're going to put him all over the field, and we're building the offense around him. Yeah. Again, if he stays healthy, and I do think, and I said this to you when he was at Texas two years ago, I think he has that body and that build that he can. He can be the twelve year twelve year running back and still be good in year ten and eleven. Not, maybe not as good as year two, but that's all running back. But still be a twelve hundred yard guy ten years from now. So I, I get the the I get the the Atlanta one, the Detroit one. I don't know. It was just a weird one all around. Uh, the best game of the week uh, was probably Miami L A. Uh, that was what you want. That's 
that was great football. Back and forth. One team would get up. Another team would get up. The Chargers basically end up losing by two because their great cornerback, Jackson, on a, at the end of the first half, pushes a wide receiver on a Hail Mary attempt that's 25 yards down the field. He's not going to catch it in the end zone. And, I mean, it's not – it's hard to get a pass interference call on a, on a Hail Mary or a end of the first half throw – I mean, that, that's the Chargers right there. They lose by two because one of their really good players who had an interception later on does something just mind-numbingly dumb at the worst moment. Yeah. Uh, hey, but kudos to Kellen Moore. I think it was a really good first game for him as offensive coordinator. They ran the ball, actually, and they ran well. Um, I see you shook your head. Did you disagree with what I'm saying? I mean, it was a fine game, but I mean – he he's going to do fine there because of the talent. Like th- th- this, yeah. this isn't like he's coming in to a team that hasn't, you know, th- that has a, a rookie UFA quarterback and doesn't, I mean, I, I, I dare to say there are 75 offensive coordinators in the world right now. And if not more, that could take that offense and score 30 points. And also Miami's defense is still trash. Yeah. Uh, I guess. Jalen Ramsey, it'll be a while before he returns. But you kind of thought with Vic Fangio, and I think with Vic Fangio yeah. led defense, was, mm-hmm. it usually is year two and three when you see the the real improvements. I, but, I, I uh, think you know, it'll take time. Yeah. I, I mean, they, they have pieces there. They got Deshaun Elliott in the offseason. They have Bradley Chubb from the trade last year. They got Eli Apple over the offseason and, and David Long Jr., so I, I really feel, especially when Ramsey gets back, that that defense is going to start picking it up toward the end of the year. But more importantly, that Dolphins offense, when everybody is healthy, may be the best offense in the league. Oh, yeah. that I mean, they even used Braxton Berrio, who they got from the Jets last I season. I forgot that. Well, they even had some other white slot guy that had a couple big plays. I mean, like, legit, that, that's when an offense is great. It's not when it's just Waddle and it's Hill and, and it's Tua. It's when it's guys that are fourth and fifth down the down the sheet getting meaningful catches because Barrios, who was a Pro Bowl kick returner, you saw that. I mean, he made two amazing catches within five plays. Like both of yeah. them will go up as candidate for catches of the year. But the great thing about it was is there was the, both safeties were rolling over to the side so much that he was wide open. And he's a yeah, guy. Yeah. I mean, he's a he's Cole Beasley, but faster. Uh, th- that's the way I look at him. Um, and, and you see when Tua is healthy, man, what Tua can do. 466 mm-hmm. yards, three touchdowns. Tyreek Hill, 215 yards, uh, two touchdowns. Waddle had, I think, 65 yards. I still don't understand why this offense hates the tight end, except for right when they get down into the 10-yard line, they'll throw to the tight end. Durham Smythe is their tight end right now. He had three catches for 44 yards. And he had a touchdown. I know somebody, one tight end had a touchdown. Um, yeah, I mean, this is – this was a fun oh game. River River uh, Craycraft. Okay, you just made up a name. I'll go with it. Uh, oh no, he's a receiver though. River River Craycraft. I'm oh, seriously. Well, I, okay, sure. No, <laughs> <laughs> he looked like a tight end. I'm pretty sure it, well, it was goal line, so he might have been playing. He might have been lining up. I'm going to call him a tight end. Um, but uh, okay. <laughs> but no, I mean that that was a fun game. That's what you look for. I mean, that's when you think of what do you love about football, the NFL you can point to that game because there was good defense play. Like I said, uh, Jackson had a big interception for the chargers. There were, it wasn't, it wasn't like just seeing two teams with terrible defense. As much as I just say the dolphins defense is trash. I really don't think that. <laughs> I, I just think that that was two good offenses going toe to toe. Yeah, I, I agree with you. All right. Uh, let's where do you want to go? Where are we going? Uh, let's see. We covered. You want to talk about the Rams and Seahawks? I just real quick. Let's talk about them and Philadelphia back to back, and then we'll we'll head up to our game. Um, look, you and I have talked about it with Geno Smith. Uh, love the story, but and Daniel Jones might fit into this too. But every couple years, there's a guy that comes out of nowhere, has a great year. Everybody's ready to name him. Then oh, he's finally figured it out. And then the next year, he he kind of comes back. And I'm not saying Geno Smith's going to do that, but Geno Smith looked like the Geno Smith that we're used to. He did some good things, but could not. And and I know Tyler Lockett got knocked out early with a concussion, uh, but you've got an offense that legitimately was built around you. And you've got to come out against the Ram team that's supposed to be down. I'll tell you what, I don't think the Rams are down. Um, And you only put up 13 points at home. 
Now that was the trend though. Road teams won a lot this week. Um, but still, yeah, I, 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 we said it in the preview show, Seattle, I think still in trouble. Man. Yeah. Hey, Aaron Donald went healthy can make a bad defense look good. Did you and see that video where Gino saw him coming uncovered and said, Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He knew it was about to happen to him. I, man, I, just watching that game. It was just like a, a slow death, like a death by a thousand needles. It was just uh, the, the Seahawks were in control of this game until they weren't. And kudos to McVay, you know, uh, McV- uh, the Rams head coach, Sean McVay, his offense works best when he has a running game. It really wasn't there, but they did rush it 40 times. Yeah. And they got 92 yards. Kyron Williams is going to probably be picked up by every team or any team that can uh, this week in fantasy. He had two touchdowns and, you know, he just kept getting the ball. And Cam Akers had 22 carries, but only got 29 yards. But that commitment to the running game, I think, is one thing on the offense that they really were sorely lacking. Stafford, good game back, over 300 yards. Uh, 2-2 Atwell, Puka, uh, Nakua. Nakua. Uh, yeah, Nakua, they both had 119 yards each, which is kind of a rarity for two receivers to have the same number of yards. And, and uh, they were – and Nakua was that frustrating third and seven, he gets the first down like multiple times that just if you're a Seattle fan, that's just so grinding when that happens. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Cam Akers looked bad, though. Like, yeah, he, he did. Bad. Like I said, I number mean, 20 carries and not even 30 yards. He looked bad. Like, I, I don't, he's one of those going to be the great what ifs. In this era, him and Mosfert and Jeff Wilson and, and yeah, Eli yeah. Mitchell, all of them just kind of came out of nowhere. And for flashes, you saw, but they can't stay healthy. Uh, I'm going to tell you what, I think McVeigh, and, and I, I was actually going to tell you this a couple weeks ago, we were talking about the Rams. I think McVeigh is going to have fun this season. Because he gets to be the mad scientist again. He doesn't have an offense that's just already there and, and all he has to do is make the right call. He's got to do different things. And just seeing him on the sideline, a, a lot of people are assuming this is his last year with the Rams, that he'll either go to another team or he might even just go up into the booth and you know be young and be like the next Madden. Yeah, and I could yeah. see either way, but I could also see him building a team to where next year they just need another quarterback. In saying that, Boy, Matt Stafford looked pretty damn good. Uh, 24 of 38, 334 yards. He was throwing inside the hashes, which tells me his elbow's not bothering him. Because you're, if you're throwing inside the hashes, you're throwing over the linebacker and under the safety. I'm just saying, and I first week, but the Rams looked really, really good. And they were doing a lot of things that really good teams do no matter what week it is. Now, in saying that, this is who they've got the next four weeks. Niners. Bengals, Colts, Eagles. I mean, they might be able to compete against the Colts. <laughs> They'll beat the Colts. Uh, the I, Eagles, I, like we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk about the Eagles and uh, let's go, let's go, that, that's, we're going to talk to Eagles next. So go ahead if you want to go that way. For one quarter, the Eagles look like they did last year. They're up 16 0, and then they let, <clears throat> uh, they let the Patriots back in. And honestly, I thought Mac Jones had a really good game. He still is kind of like, bumbling little, little goofball out there but i mean he was kind of dealing dealing well like I, I, he doesn't have the receiving core that other teams have but he was throwing well eagles looked putrid on offense after that that initial start and well, even yeah, the touchdowns was a, a pick six yeah i mean they literally them and dallas started so much alike um where their special teams and their defense made big plays and, and that got them up. And then after that, what, what else happens? The Cowboys kind of kept the foot on the gas, but slowly talk about slow death. And then the Eagles, man, that off. And, and let's remember now the Patriots have a really good defense. Yeah. Uh, but as you talked about, Jones went 35 of 54 for three touchdowns, the interception, uh, Ezekiel Elliott look, looks done. Seven carries, 29 yards. Uh, now the one concern is, is Ramondre Stevenson was your leading receiver that they still, they can't check down all game. This is another game where the top two receivers both had the same number of yards at 64. (laughs) That's true. Wow. That's weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that I, I, the, 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 the Eagles are going to be fine. 
I, I do think the Eagles had a little bit of that hubris that happens to all good teams. I'm not saying it's just where they got up 16 to nothing first week of the season. They're like, all right, you know what? We don't want to show too much. Let's just throttle back. Let's just run basic stuff and we'll get out of here with a, you know, a 30 to 14 win, but the Patriots defense is really good. And, and the, the thing about Mac Jones jokes about him. He, he is one of those that picks himself up and keeps going. And there is something to that. I, I think in this system and stuff, you know, I, 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 I was, I wasn't high on him in the off season. I still don't think he's the future for them. I, I think I still contend that he's the next backup that plays well enough to always have a, a starting job for a bad team for a year. If that makes sense. Colt McCoy. Yeah, but Colt never even – Colt's really just been a backup. I mean, more like a Ryan Fitzpatrick, uh, where every year a bad team who, you know, they're going to be 7-10 and 10 no matter what. They'll get him cheap. He'll he'll provide some fun games, but he won't be consistent enough. Uh, let's – real quick, I know we're, we're not really – it's our show. I go as long as we want. I, I do want to bring up Jacksonville and Indianapolis. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. I think that was such an important game for both teams because, A, Indianapolis looks like a football team again. Like, uh, hey, Richardson played way better than I thought he would have. Yes. Um, and, and they look like they're a team that's going to get some wins this year. I, it wouldn't shock me. And and I I, was, I say shocked. I'm the one that put them at third in the con- in, in the division and said they would be playing for a playoff spot. Um, but they 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 didn't go out and do it ugly. Uh, they didn't go out and do it with like, you know, smoke and mirrors. They, they, they threw the ball 37 times. Uh, he had a touchdown. Anthony Richardson ran for 40 yards. I'm going to say it now, though. It, boy, this would look so much different if Jonathan Taylor was there. I mean, I, that, yes. this is one of those where Ursay, you're stupid. You've got your quarterback. Go win. You know, you, you, you go win. But I also give Jacksonville credit because Jacksonville is now making this a thing. They get down early. They score two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. We can talk about. I said last year their their off their fluke wins at the end were a lot of fluky, like the Cowboy game, like the playoff game against the Chargers. The problem is, if you do that four out of five times, that's just who you are, and, and that's good. I mean, we're, we're literally talking about Roger Staubach made a career of that. Yeah, it's almost and, like the Jaguars are trying to get a feel of what their opponent's doing, and then when they get that feel, then they start playing. Yeah, or, or just Trevor Lawrence is one of those that when it's time, he turns it on because he made some clutch throws in that fourth quarter. Yeah. Uh, and Anthony Richard had the bad interception, but again, that's going to happen. Uh, but look, we talked about it. Calvin Ridley, Jesus Christ, he looked good. Now, they did a good job in the second half on him, uh, but still, man, that first half, he was ru- running wide open. But then you see that the Jaguars have a lot of talent on their team. I mean, they if Ridley wasn't open, Rep Lawrence could throw it to Zay Jones or Evan Ingram. They got Travis Etienne as well in the backfield. Christian Kirk's still on the team. <laughs> Don't forget him. Yeah, he was, and you're gonna ha- again. You're gonna have a lot of that in week one, where the first your one wide receiver teams will do a good job because they've had a couple weeks to game plan against you. Yeah, uh, yeah. but yeah, you're right. Christian Kirk goes one and nine, and, and uh, Zay Jones five of fifty five, Ingram five of forty nine. At the end, was only for twenty seven yards, but then Calvin Ridley uh, one hundred and one yards. You get that to where you, as a defense, you don't know who's going to be your lead wide receiver. That's when you become dangerous. That's when your team becomes the most dangerous in a passing game. Packers, Bears. Boring as fuck. God, that Justin Fields, I, I'm sorry. And, and I hope he does well. I I like that style quarterback. Yeah. But this was supposed to be the leap. And, and I know, again, game one. But, man, some things just – I don't see much difference. I, I, I just – it looked like Chicago of last year. Green Bay looked really good. Jordan Love looked really good. But I think everybody's going to go back to Chicago. Just that was the biggest. That was probably the biggest dud of the weekend. Uh, yeah, I could probably. Agree. Them and the Giants. I, I had so much. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Giants especially. Uh, but yeah, with the Bears with all the offseason moves, I thought this game would be more competitive. I even thought this might be an upset. But I mean, Jordan Love was good. Well, I, I think no. I think a lot of people. With it being in Chicago, had Chicago as the favorite. I think it, this is considered an upset. I mean, Green Bay went from one of the older teams, one of the newer teams. So, when the, yeah, I mean, I guess I could see that their receivers are really, relatively speaking, inexperienced. Christian Watson, their top receiver from last year that was returning, he was out for the game. So, yep. uh, you know, we got Jordan Love coming for this first start. Or, you know, he's he is the quarterback now for this team going forward. And you can tell he's comfortable. Yeah, he looked good. 
but he had a, a great mentor, you know, watching Rogers for three years, kind of what Rogers did and watching far for three years. It's just kind of their succession plan. Yeah. And I mean, if, if, if they hit on this, if they hit on this, the run that they've had and now Dallas has had with the other way going with a UFA and a fourth round pick, it, it just shows you a, that you can never, you never know where your quarterbacks are going to come from. But, but I mean, just all of green Bay looked good. Aaron Jones. I know he, ha- he ended up, uh, kind of pulling his hamstring, but he was telling people at the end of the game, he was perfectly fine. He could play if he needed to. I think this is how you want to use him. Nine carries, 41 yards, two carries, 80 or two receptions, 86 yards. You want him to get to a hundred total yards. It doesn't have to be running. Yeah. And, and, and I'm just, I mean, this is just, I don't know. This, this was a crappy dud, dud, dud game. The score does not tell you how boring this game was. Yeah. Uh, Cause it was what, what was, was the score half? It was 10 to 6 at half. 10 6. I couldn't remember if it was 10 3 or 10 9. I don't know why it's 10 9. And, and then they scored 28 points in the second. And even then, a lot of that was kind of ugly, except for the Aaron Jones. That was pretty. I, I love that's where you love that sky cam because they show you the replay and you saw that safety go in motion and you knew it before, like, oh, here it comes. And, and it was a beautiful throw. And Aaron Jones still so underrated. Um, but all right. Let's get oh, into oh, yeah. We can talk about Houston. They lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'll just say I wasn't impressed with Tom Munkin in his first game as offensive coordinator. He was the offensive coordinator for Georgia when they went back to back championships. I, I think that was all on Lamar Jackson. He looked terrible. He did. He looked terrible, fumbling the ball multiple times. And now let's remember, he didn't play what five games at the end of the year last year. So it's it's been a while since he's been on the field, but still. I don't know. Uh, that for for them, J.K. Dobbins out for the year, torn Achilles, Achilles tendon. That sucks, not only for them but for him. But he was looking really good, and, and they're an offense that wants to have multiple uh, running backs, so that's going to hurt them. Uh, yeah, look, you know, Houston, that game didn't go bad. They just, they just, you know, they they got behind the eight ball, and they don't really have an offense right now that's going to play catch up. Uh, I don't think D'Amico had any, oh, my God, that's a terrible call or anything like that. I, I, I felt that they got beat like a team trying to figure out what they're going to be will get beat a lot this year. They're going to be a lot of 24 tens, and I know this is 25 nine, but it's the same thing. There's going to be a lot of those until they kind of figure things out. Yeah, I agree. A all lot right. of injuries in this game, too. A lot. Oh, yeah. Well, and also, Jimmy, I don't think Jimmy Ward played at all, did he? I don't think he did, no. Yeah, so they had three guys on defense. But, yeah, I'm just – you might be right as far as who it is, but I'm just, I was absolutely shocked how bad uh, the, the Ravens and, and for Texans fans. Well, maybe it was our defense. No, these were unforced Lamar. Like at one point Lamar like was rolling out and dude punched it out and the ball back and, and Lamar just kind of, he just nonchalantly rolled back. Like he kind of like the Cam Newton fumble from the Super Bowl. I don't know. He just didn't, I don't think he's happy. I don't think he. I don't he think the he, money. He got the talent on that team. Like, what's he not happy about? I don't know if maybe he didn't really want to be on this team. I, I think he was thinking new start somewhere else, and that didn't happen. And so you didn't have to take the money that's offered. That's just my. That's my big right. soap opera thing. I just. He just didn't look like he's having fun playing football, and, well, and that's really tough in week one. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we'll see how it is by week nine. All right. Let's finish it up. I, I this Dallas over the last 15 years, Dallas used to be the best team at opening day. I, at one point, I think they won 17 straight opening games. Yep. The last four or five years, they've been the exact opposite. They've been 0 and 1, but always seem to win that second game. So that tells me they're losing to the Jets next week. I don't know. If they, I don't think Dallas can legally get to 2 and 0. I just don't think that's possible. But I, I mean, as far as one side of the ball, wow. I mean that 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 looked like 1985 Chicago Bears, just ramsacking. You know, and people say, "Well, 2000 Baltimore, Baltimore and Tampa Bay as great as they were defensively, they never were just eating the quarterback every play." Yeah, that's what Dallas was doing last night. And we're not. Michael Parsons had one sack, and then basically, I don't want to say didn't factor in because a lot of plays happened, but he he had one sack. Dorrance Armstrong has seven snaps. Two sacks, three tackles. Yeah. The, they have a depth that we have not seen in Dallas since the 90s. I mean, it, 
They they can roll out eight deep a uh, defensive line, and then I think Fowler is technically a ninth lineman. Yeah, he looked good last night. You know, last year he kind of came up and would have. I think he had six sacks, and it was like three two sack games, and then you didn't really see Fowler the rest of the year. Um, this he was when he was in, and this was everybody when they were in their their defensive line. And I know that I know Chris Collinsworth was trying to talk about that run game of the Giants in that first drive, but even he said, "Well, you know what." When you see an offense on the very first drive having to do all the rollouts and the throwback screens and all that, you know that they know that they're in trouble. And, and this is why I, I still is not that worried about a run game. Now, if you play Atlanta in the playoffs, that's some worry because they're 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 happy to go, hey, we're gonna we're gonna run it 35 times no matter what happens. 90% of the teams in the NFL will not do that. I, the Giants last night, why did they not just stick with the run game? Yeah, that I'm was cool. it's yeah, they have one of the better half. They, their offensive line is really good, except for in pass protection against the Cowboys. Yeah, and, and that's what it's hard to calibrate this game. I don't, I no, I don't think the Giants are as good as they were last year. I also don't think the Giants are as bad as we saw last night. I legitimately think Dallas is going to do this to a lot of offenses this year. They've done it for the last two two years in a game now. This is a trend. This isn't a fluke. This isn't smoke and mirrors. This is a, a defense that has drafted well and picked up UFAs well and made key decisions like Jonathan Hankins' trade. They made it, it, we we can joke about Jerry Jones all we want, but Will McClay, that front office, and Dan Quinn ha have built. Dare I say? a perfect defense for this era. You're still going to give up points against good offense because we're in an offensive era. But for this era, this Dallas defense can run with anybody. Hey, you talk about defense, special teams too, man. Uh, I mean, Aubrey missed that first extra point. but came back, came back after, though. And then the blocked kick return for a touchdown to start the game by Noah. I mean, it was great on special teams, even better on defense. They had seven sacks. Stephon Gilmore got an interception. A uh, great interception. By the way, Dallas is the first time in their history that their first two point or first two scores were special teams and a defensive turnover mm. or special teams touchdown. Uh, it's the first time that's happened since, oh, I think they said 2016 Minnesota. Oh, wow. Okay. And I kind of remember, I want to remember because that's the first year that I got full red zone. Okay. Like red zone. That was back on PS View, which isn't even a thing now. PlayStation had their own little streaming service. And I want to say, I, I remember the game, whatever it was, I think it was Minnesota. But anyway, now in saying all that, Daniel Jones looked terrible. Terrible. Just on that big contract, and that's how he shows up. Because that's who Daniel Jones is. He's not as bad as he was last night, but he's not. And I still contend last year he wasn't good. He just didn't make mistakes. So what did he do last night? He made mistakes. Um, but also... How can you blame him when he literally, I mean, there was a point where Collinsworth was like, do you, and this was in the second half or the second quarter. Do you think about pulling him because you can't protect him? I mean, like, <laughs> I mean, it, it, I, I haven't, it's been a long time since I've seen a game in the NFL where every snap, every snap uh, that's a pass. There's somebody for Dallas sitting in that backfield on Daryl and on Daniel Jones. Yeah. Um, and, and I even joked with you, I'm like, think about that. They got six sacks. Now go back to the 80, I think it was 84 Cowboys against Houston, and they had 12 sacks in one game. But that was all blitzes and stuff. This was four guys. This was four guys just absolutely dominating an offensive line that was retooled, rebuilt, and restructured for the likes of Dallas and Philadelphia. That's why we've said that's why you and I said Giants are in trouble this year. They're not ready yet. They're not built to to be a top team in this division yet. I've, I've never heard of this safety Marquise Bell. Oh yeah. I know, I know he was a cowboy last year, but uh, he looks blazing fast. He's 6'3, 205, blazing he fast got, safety for the Cowboys. I, I want to say he might have got he he was hurt last year coming in, but he was a Dan Quinn signee. And I rem, I just remember the the video on YouTube of him at you at, at Florida. I think it was Florida Atlanta. No, it's uh it's the one with the snakes, one of the most underrated uniforms because it's green and orange, but somehow it works. But anyway, uh, he was one of those guys that were all over. Well, Florida and he was, Yeah, Florida A&M. Underrated uniform, I'm telling you. Uh, but, yeah, he he had some of those freakish plays you see in college type deal. And, and so 
again, just another guy. They're deep everywhere on defense. Yeah. They're deep everywhere. The, 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 the one thing you have to be concerned about, is, and, and, and for the record, every NFL team has offensive line depth issues right now. We're in an era right now where there's not enough quality offensive line. So Dallas isn't the only one, but that's Dallas's big concern is, is can they stay healthy on the offensive line? Boy, they looked great last night when they needed to. I'm not going to – I don't think there's really anything to talk about offensively. There was nothing to see. That's the best way to put it. Yeah, I mean, they didn't even have the time of possession advantage in this game. Dak threw for 143 yards. They ran for 122 overall. I, their tight ends couldn't catch a pass. But again, like we they said, open, any though. game we talked about today, it's week one. Yep. Yeah. And, and but I would see Schoonmaker. Yeah, that's true. I, I, I'll say this though. I thought Dak looked good on the throws. Like yeah. he looked confident. He looks comfortable in the system. I thought McCarty, th- McCarty th- called a pretty good play. They're a good game. They're again, their, de- their, their offense was never really, you know, in, in, in trouble. Uh, I, I would have liked to seen a touchdown on the first two drives, at least one of them instead of Phil gold. But again, off all defenses now, you give up the 20 to 20 and you just hold for three. So you're going to see that. It doesn't mean your offense is necessarily bad. But I, I think that is one thing where we need to, th- again, if tight ends will catch the ball, we're, we're talking maybe 48 to nothing. And I, I want to say this to, before we wrap up with next week's games. Dallas, give them credit. Over the last couple of years, when they jump on a team, they smell blood and they 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 destroy. You talk about Minnesota last year. You talk about Indianapolis last year. You talk about Atlanta a couple of years ago. Not to come back Atlanta the next year where they just it was close for a little while and then Dallas. I watched that comeback game. Oh, that's right, you did. I, yeah. I mean, you've seen like, yeah. so you've seen like two the last two games you went. You saw the Philadelphia Amari Cooper bobble OT game, and then you saw the great comeback game. Yeah. Wow, you need to go to more football games. Um, so. Which, by the way, you can on SeatGeek. Go to SeatGeek. Use our promo code L4Media. You get $20 off your first purchase on SeatGeek. If you want to go to a college game, pro game, a concert, anything that has tickets, SeatGeek will take it. So just download the app or go to their website, SeatGeek.com. Type in L4Media in the promo code. You get $20 off your first thing. But what Dallas does is they 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 – they don't do what Philadelphia did, get up 16 nothing, and then have to fight and sort. Dallas has gotten really good about when they jump. They jump early and 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 they and they do it. And you like to see that. But that's because Dan Quinn stays aggressive on defense. Yeah. He doesn't go in a shell. Like they were freaking still sending the house. I say sending the house. It was just the first four, but they were still playing just as aggressive in the fourth quarter as they were in the first quarter. Yep. All right. Let's uh end it with games for next week. Uh key matchups. Uh let's see who you have here. Minnesota, Philadelphia. Hey, look, Thursday night schedule is really good this year. Uh, I, like you got the Eagles this week and Minnesota. You got the Niners in a couple weeks. You got the Packers. Uh, I'm glad they're, if you're going to have to play them, at least make them good. Uh, you got Minnesota, Philadelphia, Baltimore, Cincinnati, Kansas City, Jacksonville, a rematch, Miami, New England, uh, New Orleans, Carolina, Sunday night, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Monday night. Give me your winners on those. Philadelphia, Cincinnati. Ooh, uh, I'll go with Kansas City. Um, uh, New England, wow, New Orleans, and Cleveland. All right, I've got Philadelphia, but it'll be ugly. I've got Cincinnati. I've got Kansas City. I think I think this is where Mahomes. It's he's going to flop it out this game and just remind everybody he's Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. Um, I've got Miami. I, I think New England's going to be better than I thought they were, but I still got. I, I think Miami's the hot team that starts like six and zero, seven and zero, and everybody starts the whole. Can they? Um, I've got the Saints, but I think it'll be close. Mm-hmm. And then I have Cleveland in like a ten nine game. I, I, I think Cleveland fans need to be worried about Deshaun Watson. He didn't look good. And, and 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 we're supposed to be well. Hey, he's finally got a full year back. Blah blah. He and I can understand why <laughs> everything that's happened in his life, there's there's a spark missing with him, and you yep. can see it on the field. Unfortunately, well, I mean, not maybe fortunately if, if you believe in justice. I don't know how you want to do that. All right, the Texas games: Indianapolis versus Houston. I've got Indianapolis. No, no, I'm going to go Houston because oh, Indianapolis okay. because this is what Indianapolis do does. They lose good, and you think you know what? They look pretty good. They're going to play a Houston team that's down, and then this will be where Anthony Richardson throws three t- interceptions, and D'Amico Ryan's is a genius when it comes to scheming. Uh, so I'll go Houston and slide upset. All right, let's talk at New York Jets versus the Dallas Cowboys. 
if you take Aaron Rodgers off the Jets and put any quarterback in the league, any, I think Dallas wins this game. I just, every time I think Dallas finally has Aaron Rodgers, he just has the Cowboys number. And the trend the last few years is lose week one against an okay to good team and then beat a really good team in week two. That's kind of a upset like the Chargers two years ago, Cincinnati last year. I think Dallas is going to win it though, but it's going to be, it's, I think you're going to see our defense give up. I think this is a 35, 28 type game. I have no idea what to expect because I don't either. I don't either. We're recording on Monday. The Jets play tonight. They host the bills. And that's a good point. If some major injury happens, we don't, we we can't, you know, we're going with what the jets have right now going into the, the season game tonight. And then next Sunday, good point. It'll be climate controlled. So that's another advantage for Rogers and, and the Cowboys too. And the Cowboys, it'll, be, yeah. it'll be best team versus best team. Uh, if I have to pick a gate team now, I'll, I'll, I'll be a homer. I'll go with the Cowboys. But again, I don't know how the Jets are going to use Tomlin or not Tomlinson, but Dalvin Cook and Brees Hall and how much they're going to throw and how well, that Wolf defense. Does. That defense has got to figure out they're young. They're they're. I think the Jets is the classic. They may, and they have a really tough schedule to start. They may start out three and three and then end up 12 and five. Oh, yeah. I I think, I I think the Jets, and I know people are going to want to try to make an instant decision tonight because it's Aaron Rodgers. uh, But it wouldn't shock me if the Jets are three and three, 0 and two, then three and three, and then 12 and five. I I just feel like Dallas is, Dallas is is ahead of where the Jets are going to be at home. I, I just think, that, and, I, and I don't know, man, something just felt different last night. Like, it, it just felt different. It didn't feel like, oh, Dallas just happened to win the pass rush that night. It feels like it's not going to be that f- frenetic, but I I, I doubt, I'm not going to say that because that's, that's going to jinx it. I just think Dallas is going to have many games where four sacks is the minimum, and they're going to live in the backfield a lot because they've been doing that already, but they looked better doing it this year. Last night. In my opinion, I think the Giants' offensive line is better than the Jets' offensive line. If that exactly makes a difference, but Aaron Rodgers will kick get them out of twenty sacks because he, he, he nothing else he can get rid of the ball. Yeah, and that's where Daniel Jones were at fault last night was there he was trying to hold the ball too much. And I get it, you're down thirty three to nothing. What else are you going to do? Right. All right, man. That's week one in the books. I think we covered every team. Good job. I think, I think we did. I think that might be the first time we got all the fantasy, all the teams, the uniform <laughs> games, everything, and we had fun doing it. Also, remember, we have a college show now. It's already up, so when you're listening to this, look up or down here on YouTube. You can also find these audio only at Out Drink the Coverage. I'll put those up probably tomorrow. Uh, the videos, though, will go up immediately. Until next time, he's intern, Noe. I'm Terry Bennett, and this has been Out Drink the Coverage on L4 Media. Okay. I mean, that was a good point. I think we might start seeing some go back.